It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Birds and the 49ers on Thursday night. We are about 40 miles or so south of Candlestick Point at a place that first opened back in 2014. As you get a look at Levi's Stadium here in Santa Clara, California. A few short moments ago, these two teams made their way out of the Levi's Stadium tunnels, and the noise level in this place was deafening. They're set for football as the 49ers get ready to do battle with the Philadelphia Eagles. Welcome again, one and all. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Brandon Gordon on hand alongside Charles Davis. And yes, the storyline here, the weather. Snow and more of it expected as this game continues. So how will that impact how this one goes? Can these teams ignore the distraction and the strangeness of playing in a snow game? Because it actually affects the crowd as well. That big roar you get is often muffled when there's a snow game. And the second part, what's the footwear you got on? Does that fit the turf you're playing on? And how will it handle as things get a little bit slick? a return from just beyond the goal line and only able to get this to the 19 so probably should have opted for the touchback Philly's offense getting ready and Jalen Hurts ready to lead them the second round pick who started his career at Alabama then finished with an electric senior season at Oklahoma tremendous production in college at two different universities and this is a guy who was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy Still much more of a runner than a thrower, but has plenty of arm and is capable of making the big throws downfield. And don't underestimate his ability to think the game. Remember, he's the son of a coach. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Here's a second and five now from the 25. Hurts. That swung out wide to Sanders. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive. It just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does. And we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. Being chased out left. And Hurts able to show off some of that elusiveness as he slides to the ground there and in the process picks up the first down. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in. But somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain.
A pair of first downs gives him a first and 10 up at the 44. Throwing his hurts. Open man, that's Devontae Smith. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. I love that play, because in the snow, you think run, run, run. Big passing play there. And defenders hate it, especially in open space, because trying to come under control, break down, and make a tackle in the open field, difficult normal conditions. In these conditions, almost impossible. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 27. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. He'll get three yards on the scramble there. It's second down. Here's Hurts to throw. He's got Dallas Goddard, his tight end over the middle. And the Eagles are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. Okay, I'm not so great at math, but I just looked over at our statistician, Marvin, and he signaled to me five for five to get things started here on this opening drive. Where I come from, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Now, what do you do defensively to adjust? Well, this is where you've got to make a decision as, your defensive, as a defensive coordinator. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Miles Sanders, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Eagles drive right down the field and score on the opening drive. They got to love that. Nine-play drive results in six points. That means they're doing the dictating. That means that they've described how the game's going to go. They're playing at their tempo, at their pace. If you're on the other side of the ball, if you're playing defense, defense is not methodical. They've got to go in there and shake things up and create a little havoc. Extra point through the snowflakes, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was Miles Sanders who finished it off with a touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. The 49er offense about to go to work, and it's Jimmy Garoppolo, Charles, at quarterback. And Jimmy Garoppolo has shown that he can be a Super Bowl quarterback, but his biggest problem, his ability to stay healthy and remain on the field. When able, he's a capable quarterback prone to winning games both in the regular and postseason. Garoppolo going to bring the Niners up here first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. The last run got six, now second and four. 
to throw. It's Garoppolo. Pressure comes, and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. That's Derek Barnett coming in and making the play. Impressive individual effort there. No one was going to stop him around the edge. Yeah, no doubt about it. And that's why if you play in a 4-3 base and you're a defensive end, that's why you get the big bucks. They count on you to do everything. Defend the run and, of course, get to the quarterback. So the sack of Garoppolo. And now what can they come up with on third and long? They're going to look to throw. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. And he is going to have a Niners first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play, won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? They run on first down as they're able to get this forward for about four. Well, you don't turn your nose up at a gain of four, do you? They'll take that on first down. Playbook's got to be pretty well open on second and six. Six yards left on second down. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. The Eagles call on the extra defensive back here as they prepare for a stop on third down. To throw is Garoppolo. Drops this underneath, it's Mitchell. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner, but to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Here's Garoppolo to throw. Three yards the game there, second down. to throw. Man open, that's Debo Samuel. And he has another first down as they get the ball down to the Eagles 26. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. On first down, it's Mitchell. And give him about three as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Looking to throw, Garoppolo. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Well, 
They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Working from the gun, Garoppolo. And that is incomplete. Fourth down now looming after Philly's defense stands tall in coverage. Well, that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. So Garoppolo off, coming on is the veteran Robbie Gold for the 49er field goal. From the left hash, this from 39. The kick by Gold is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So, yes, it's only three, but at least they're able to answer back after giving up the touchdown to start the game. Yeah, I like the observation there because getting some points on the board, very positive for them. Feel a little bit better about things because if you don't score, you potentially have opened the door for them to score again, and then you're down 14. splitting the uprights to kick this one away. This will be fielded inside the five. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So back onto the field, here come the Eagles for their second drive. They had the touchdown on the opening drive of the ball game. It was countered by just a field goal. So, hey, if your guys can do that for four quarters, you're in good shape. Yeah, it is a team game, so that's just good complimentary football. But, you know, I know I'm no brainiac, but you trade sixes for threes, things are going to work out in your favor. He'll fire it deep for Rager. Tried to drop it in there, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Jason Barrett. And the 49ers are going to take over at their own 28-yard line. When I was in school, math was not my strong suit. But I did learn enough to know how to play cover three. Two corners and a safety divide up the field in thirds. On this play, the corner didn't get fooled by anything in front of him. Kept his coverage all the way down the sideline in the deep third position and makes the interception. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, Yeah, right? a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting on field only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. Snap will come from the 31 on second and seventh. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And not much of an opening there as he's only going to get this from about the 32. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. Throwing is Garoppolo on third down. Trying for oh! it's intercepted. Picked up by Anthony Harris. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. That's where they'll take over. Well, so much of playing quarterback in the snow comes down to trying not to do too much. You've got to just keep telling yourself, throws downfield we've run every day in practice all year. But guess what? They suddenly become more difficult. And this one gets away from him and winds up in interception. On first and 10, it's Sanders. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Eagles in possession. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Second down, back to Sanders. Sanders, a first down, still going. And he'll be taken down at the 26. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, 
you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. And that led to a really nice game. But first down, Hurts. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly picked. It's second down now. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw is probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. It's a second down run with Sanders. Down right around the 25. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Hurt sets up to throw it. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Watkins. And he is going to have an Eagles first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This. And that's one of those where it feels like backyard football in a sense. You say, forget about the route. Just run to the open spot in the middle of the field, and I'll find you. Good throw, good concentration on the catch, and they pick up the first down. Line of scrimmage, the 15, it's first and 10. Now back to throw. And this is caught in the end zone by Jalen Rager. Touchdown, Eagles. Jalen Rager there to make the grab. And the Eagles able to push further out in front. Elliott on for the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A drive that time of six plays. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This taken in at the goal line. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. The 49ers ready to set up shop again offensively. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Second and six. No, scratch that. Second and seven. 57 to Mike. 57 to Mike. Now Garoppolo. Complete to the tight end, Kittle, over the middle of the field. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. 
and I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. And he'll work this forward for about three. It's second down. From the 36, Garoppolo. This one complete to Mohamed Sanu. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. One of the selling points at the end route is against the quarterback, a really nice sight line to his receiver, and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball to the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. The Niners on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Now a give right side. It's Mitchell, and he's going to go backward. They get it behind the line. The loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. This defense has really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Eagles will be backed up deep to get the drive started as they take over first and ten. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. And thus far, the weather has not slowed this offense down one bit. They've looked good so far in the first half. They certainly have. And think back to our meeting with the head coach. And we asked him because we saw the forecast for this game, didn't we? We said, hey, have you prepared for this? And he talked about the different drills that they've done in adverse conditions, the wet ball drills, things of that nature. He said, I don't think it's going to slow us down much. We tend to handle it pretty well. And he's been right. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius, understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball, and puts it right out there for the nice pickup. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. He'll look to throw. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Devontae Smith, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. From the gun, it's Hurts. Out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Goddard. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. Left side here to Sanders. So that'll be no better than an incompletion. And that'll bring up fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. Here's Aaron Sipos out now to punt on fourth down. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the Niners will go on offense first and 10. 
And San Francisco gets set to go here. And this not an easy situation. You're down early in the elements. You're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? Well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness, maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature, to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Looking to throw, Garoppolo. He'll get this into the hands of Ayu. Five yards, now it's third and five. Throwing now is Garoppolo. Left side, that's caught by Mitchell. And he is going to have a 49ers first down. He needed five, he got it barely, as it will officially go down as a gain of five yards. We often talk about understanding the playbook, understanding progressions, and understanding what the defense is doing. We saw all of that on that play. Great recognition and understood where his running back was going to be. Found a way to have him leak out underneath, get him with the football, and they picked up the first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. 13, 13, 11, 11, A shotgun snap for Garoppolo, and that is incomplete here. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back in pass rush. They've been able to get home. And they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync. Only way to play good defense. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Garoppolo again. And right back to Kittle. This time he's got it. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. And he'll give it here to his running back. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. Well, they sent the power set out there, and their job is to be man on man and move people so they can run the football. But that time, too many men didn't get moved in the box defensively. They end up throwing him for a loss. Here comes the 49ers punter now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Jalen Hurts in this offense trotting back out. He's got the lead here in the second quarter. He's thrown the touchdown, but also an interception. As a quarterback, does that interception, even though you're playing while well, your team's got the lead, does that always stick in the back of your mind a little bit? For the best ones, it just upsets them that they did that because they don't think there should be any blemishes on their record. They think that they're way better than that. So your confidence gets tested a little bit. Being able to go back out there, maybe throw another touchdown, that'll tamp that down in a big way. Yeah, I can say he's looked pretty good to this point. Reminder coming up at halftime while the two of us head for warmer areas of the press box. We'll be sending you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half. Going deep here for Watkins. Launches deep. A jump ball and this is caught. Touchdown Philadelphia. Quez Watkins. 72 yards. And the Eagles are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. And boy, CD, it's one thing to watch a great run, but when it's a great run with broken contact, it's like a cherry on top. That was a nice play. Yeah, and this is one of the best runs you'll see. A lot of times on these long touchdowns, you'll see he gets into the end zone untouched, but not here. 
He fought his way through contact, and it barely even registered, and he just continued down the field all the way to the end zone. And the next-gen stats, it tells us the story. He added an additional 30 yards after that initial contact. After the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. Debo Samuel and the 49ers back in possession here. They've got to be thinking, how can we get him a little bit more involved here? Second quarter, you're down, and really, he's been out of the mix. I would agree with that, and oftentimes you hear, well, we're just taking what the defense is giving us, but sometimes that's just not good enough. Sometimes you have to take what you want, and that means getting him the football. Yeah, so far, just a single catch in this game. Now a deep ball here, holding just past the 50. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. In this weather, any big play in the passing game, that's, that's just a bonus, right? It certainly is, but oftentimes offenses think in clement weather plays to their advantage because you know where you're going on offense. Defenders have to react, and they often slip. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. From the gun, it's Garoppolo. Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. The sack there by Brandon Graham coming in and bringing him down to the ground. And he was plus five seconds there with a the football. Is there a time that a quarterback has to get rid of it? Somewhere generally around three seconds. So just like we're playing in our turkey bowl, right, in our backyards, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, that ball better be gone because anything past that, that's usually the end result. So eight yards on the completion there, and they'll be facing a third and 12. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. From the gun on third, Garoppolo. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Well, this first half has not gone according to plan so far offensively, or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big time spark somewhere, but it's not going to come on this drive as they have to punt this one away. Here comes the 49ers punter now, as he'll come on to kick this one away. Oh, this is off the side of his foot. And this punt goes out of bounds, and it'll be marked inside the 40. Jalen Hurts in this offense trotting back out. And he's looked pretty good. Does have the one interception, but two touchdown passes so far. Your analysis. They'll take the offset. When you talk about throwing two touchdown passes, no one wants to see an interception thrown, but those things happen in the course of a ball game and over the course of the season. But throwing two touchdown passes, that's why the team has an advantage. That's what they're looking for more of. He'll be hoping to make it a three to one ratio here in the second quarter. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. Throw left side, complete. That's Sanders. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. 
throwing his hurts. A trying for Rager, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Jason Verrett. And they will finally stop him as he's down to the 40 yard line. And that's now the second time he's picked off a pass here in the first half alone. Again, another great read defensively. And you just see him get in the right position to make the play and get his guys the football back. Debo Samuel and the 49ers back in possession here. Hasn't had his best day to this point here in the second quarter. They're losing. You got to think, though, that also means that maybe the defense doing a good job on him. There's two sides to that coin. I would agree, so you have to give them credit, but that means you've got to find a way to beat that defense and make sure one of your top playmakers touches the football and has an impact on the game. Change formations, change where he lines up, put him in motion anything possible to shake him free. Maybe that greater impact comes here on this drive. That was nice work there defensively to force the incompletion. Now, even though this drive started in plus territory, they're still not in field goal range yet. So they can work towards another couple of stops and not allowing that turnover to hurt. Throwing again on second and 10. Garoppolo checks this one down. It's Mitchell. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. To throw is Garoppolo. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Well, instead of fourth down after the incompletion, it'll be first down, roughing the passer. Coaches love their defenses to be aggressive, but they want them to be smart as well. Have to leave the quarterback alone at a certain point. Meanwhile, Garoppolo's throw complete here to IU. And they'll burn the timeout with five seconds left. A chance to try to add three points before heading to the locker room. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. And Gold is able to put it through. And that'll get the deficit down to 15. So not the greatest of first halves for him, but a little ray of light here at the end. The late turnover becomes three points before the break. Well, they certainly needed something positive to go their way. Maybe three points doesn't seem like a huge deal in the grand scheme of things, but at least it's something to build on as they head into the half. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. Taken in at the three. Let's go, let's go. So we've reached halftime here, and it's our visitors, the Eagles, leading this one. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First things first, let's get a check on the next-gen stats from that first half for Philadelphia. And they've definitely been able to exploit some holes in that opposing secondary as they threw for close to 200 yards in those first two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Niners, they weren't quite as successful throwing the ball as their counterparts were, but they still were able to move the ball reasonably well in that first half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
changed since we left you at halftime. The snow is still continuing to fall as we are back underway. Fielded just outside the goal line. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The 49er offense set to go to begin quarter number three. And right out of the gate, they face what you think could be a pretty important drive. I would say so. You know, they're down two scores. That's not the end of the world. It wasn't the strongest of first halves, but for them to start clawing back, they've got to start putting a little pressure on that defense, start cutting into this deficit. You can't have three and outs and expect to get that done. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. To throw on second and six, Garoppolo. And that's incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right, they did something to disrupt that timing. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Garoppolo to throw. That's over the middle and caught by Ayu. And he is going to have a Niners first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a much needed accomplishment there on third down. They've been forced to punt far too many times already. They needed something to go their way, and they're able to get a new set of downs. down. Mitchell. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. to Mitchell on second down. And across the midfield, stripe into Eagle territory. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. And he is going to have a 49ers first down, maybe by about a yard as they find a way to convert on third and inches. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, They've got to pay it off with some points. On first down, it's Mitchell. And they'll get this just to the 47, one yard gain. got a yard here second and nine hands it off out of the gun and he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30 53 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 16 times what makes a draw play like that successful well we did see where he made the first wave miss and that was a big part of it but a lot of it is just being actors back there making the defense think it's going to be a pass
from the 32 now. Here's first and 10. They'll try to left side. Mitchell. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. They tried to run it to the short side of the field. There just wasn't a whole lot of room to work with. Yeah, it seems like things just kept getting strung out towards the sideline, and he kept looking for a spot to dive up into the gap. There just wasn't one, so that turned into nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And no gain. A uh, jet sweep. Garoppolo taps it forward. The 22 is the line to gain here on third down. Looking to throw, Garoppolo. This one incomplete, probably should have been picked. A little nonchalant with a throw to the safety valve, but it's fourth down. No coverage bust by the defense here. They did a nice job accounting for everybody, and that led to an incompletion. So Garoppolo off, coming on as the veteran Robbie Gold for the 49er field goal. It'll be a 47-yard attempt from the left hash. The kick by Gold is good. And they're hanging around here as the lead's down to 12. So a good drive there to begin quarter number three, but they're only able to shave three points off the lead. Well, something's better than nothing. All right, they didn't play particularly well in the first half, but they definitely need them to step on the accelerator now and play a whole lot better. to kick this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And they'll be backed up to start this drive as he's taken down right around the 15. Jalen Hurts in this offense trotting back out. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for them, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Hurts a handoff to Sanders. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. chance to take a big shot downfield that's a lot of fun and they missed an opportunity the Eagles send out their punter now standing right on his own five yard line they call that a punt of 38 yards officially and the Niners set up well they take over first and ten on the short side of the field San Francisco's offense returns to the field 
And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder. It puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. So the completion good for seven there. And it'll make it a second down. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. 63 yards for him on the ground now on 18 carries. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole. And then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off. But you know what else? He brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. So first and 10 now from the 30. To throw, it's Garoppolo. That's complete out left to Ayu. A gain of six there on first. Well, if you do read man covers, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Second and four. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. I don't know what this says about me, but I love successful runs up the middle when the blocking is so well executed like that. And it doesn't matter whether it's zone blocking, whether it's a power scheme. When you have a blocker on a defender, and then a running back can read it, find the proper hole, and just go, sometimes a thing of beauty. Line of scrimmage, the 15, it's first and 10. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Mitchell. And all the way down inside the five to the four. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. Good push up front and that run in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front. And they're able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for their running back to roam. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. On play action, it's Garoppolo. Touchdown! That's caught. George Kittle from Jimmy Garoppolo. And the 49ers have cut it back within a score. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through. That's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. Gold able to tack on the extra point. And this is back to a five-point game. Taken in at the three. Got a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. Pretty important third quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. It'll be Sanders to begin the drive. And he is met quickly in the backfield. 
down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I'm getting a sense that the momentum of this game is changing since the break. Nice play there, and this D is fired up. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Another run with Sanders. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. And Nick Bosa is so quick on the outside. He gets in there to bring him down. Hey, was it a breakdown of protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Send out their punter now. Standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. Ayuk to return it. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And this offense takes over in great shape right at the 50. First and 10. From midfield, here's Garoppolo. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now here in Santa Clara. It's 49er football, but some ground to cover. They find themselves behind as we hit the fourth and final quarter. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. That was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Oh, no, he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Eagles. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. Playing in snow brings so many other factors into the game. It's not just trying to take care of the ball. And we just saw there that that's difficult to do. But just trying to keep your feet and carry out your assignments and, and make sure you're comfortable while you're out there playing. Are you warm enough in your clothing? A million things going on. But the biggest one... Hold on to the ball. And out now come the Eagles. And they'll be hoping to work a little clock and try to add on to this slim fourth quarter lead. But whatever happens on this drive, certainly a huge fumble recovery by their defense at this juncture. They start on the ground here at Sanders. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Second and six. Here's Hurts to throw. Forced out to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know, there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Sanders here as they run out of the gun. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. Now after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. We'll check on his status when we get back.
The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. This is complete to Watkins on the slant. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers, 36. Nothing flashy there. The slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys because it's a quick play. And you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch. And he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Hurt sets up to throw it. And one more time, that's Watkins. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Ahead of the chains now, second and two. They'll look to throw. And this is incomplete. And when you've already thrown two interceptions, you got to take extra special care of the football because that one could very easily have been a third. Yeah, off balance pressure coming. Probably just has to stick that one in his pocket, right? He, he does. I just think that when he's in a rut like this, I think this happens to a lot of quarterbacks. They try and overcome it by making big time throws. Throws they know they shouldn't make but they're hoping to complete them rather than having the confidence that they actually will. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Going for it with Sanders. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's that six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. But having to move bodies, that means you actually have to execute because they know what you're going to do. How are you going to make the right play call and get everyone into the right spot and win at the line of scrimmage? That's what they did there. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Looking to throw. This ball tipped, and it's going to be incomplete. Fortunate maybe to get that back. It's third down. And now offensively, it's third and ten, and I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller's thinking, what have I done before this worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. Dancing to his left. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hook. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. And they had an extra defensive back on the field on that play, and the coverage was excellent. He tried to pull it down and run for it, but they rallied to him and kept him short of a first down. The kick by Elliott is good. And that'll push the lead up to eight. From a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. Taking it about the one. And he will make it back to the 15, and that's it. Good coverage there by the kick team. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. 
And remember, despite giving up the field goal, this is still a one-score game. They're in need of the touchdown and a two-point conversion. A field goal on this drive likely doesn't do them much good. Garoppolo on first down. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 11, he goes down. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. Well, Brandon, we could see that play developing, and they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play. But no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there of those guys being able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. So still 14 yards to go, second down. Throwing now is Garoppolo. Open man is Samuel, complete. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. And that's a much needed first down right there. Look, they're down by eight. So logic says they don't have to get a touchdown out of this drive. But the way things are going, I don't know if I'd put it in the hands of my defense here. You might not get the ball back at all. So if a fourth down situation comes up, I'm thinking hard about going for it right here and right now. They'll run on first down. Mitchell, and he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. A shotgun snap for Garoppolo. And that was going to be off target and incomplete. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Garoppolo. He'll dump that one off to Mitchell. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That was just a good example of taking what the defense gave him. No one opened downfield, knew where his safety valve was, swung it out to him. He gets upfield and picks up the first down. Well done all the way around. A couple of first downs has the football position at the 43 as they come up first and 10. And here's a handoff out of the gun. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. Second down at four. From the gun, it's Garoppolo. Winds up and lets it go for Samuel. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. I don't know about you, but I wanted to reach out of the booth and snatch that pass myself. That thing floated forever up there. I think that threw off the timing of the receiver. That's why he couldn't get his feet down, even though he caught the ball. You know, Charles, I, I would have liked to have seen that. Yeah, me I, too. For, for you. I, I wanted to see you reach out and catch that. Yeah, you've heard about my hands, huh? <laughs> Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. From the gun, he'll hand this off. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it, it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Two yards on the pick up there, it's fourth down. What an advantage having an elite guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself as we just saw there. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Now Garoppolo, gotta have this one. 
And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Niners go for it, but it doesn't work out. And this defense is going to get the football back near midfield, right at the 48. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. Their defense forced the turnover on downs. They've got the lead. They're in good shape, but can't go into a shell here, right? Still got to be careful. Yeah, because they're still a long way away from kneel down time. So they've got to work on getting first downs, keep the sticks moving, right? Keep the clock going, and above all, ball security. Don't turn it over. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it's a second down. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. On second down now. It's Sanders, and now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Throwing his hurts. And this is going to be incomplete. That close on third down, I think everybody probably expecting a run. Instead, they go to the air on third and short yardage. I realize this is a passing league, and they're liable to throw the ball on any down and distance. But that short, I do question the call. Run the football, pick it up. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. The things just got interesting. They tried for the long field goal there to salt this one away. They don't get it. And now a little time for the other guys to battle they drop. Well, they thought their kicker would put it through the post and finish this one off. I'm sure they discussed pooch punting it and letting their defense take over. Well, the defense now has to make it stand up but they didn't get the best field position because the ball comes back to the line of scrimmage. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. Fighting to stay upright. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Derek Barnett in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. Garoppolo hustling him back to the line now. Now Garoppolo. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. These are the spots, this stage of the game, where it pays to have speed on the perimeter, doesn't it? It certainly does, and in the second quarter, he may very well run by him, but in this situation, I know as a defender, I'm loosening up a couple of extra steps that allowed him to run with him stride for stride. Back to throw, Garoppolo. He's going to let it fly. And he's got it. What a catch on the sideline. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over. A big play that time through the air. 36 yards. That's a great job of working the sideline right there. I love how he tracked the football the whole way. Just reached up and pulled it in. Had excellent field presence to understand where he was in order to make that play happen. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. To throw is Garoppolo. Checks this one down. It's Mitchell. Not much there. Only a yard. Was that a receiver? 
<laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. Garoppolo's throw pulled in by Kittle. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14, before he's out of bounds. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Target Samuel. And the 49ers are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. A lot of practice time, a lot of thinking goes into two-minute drills, even on the defensive side. So now you want to make sure the guys understand. Continue to be aggressive, but make sure you're smart in doing so. A line of scrimmage, once again the five, as they get ready for second and goal. He's back to throw. And this is caught. He's got it for a touchdown. Conversion. The touchdown's massive, but now they've got to have two to possibly take this to overtime. The late touchdown was only half the battle. Now they need the two-point conversion to tie the ball game. They'll try and run it in. And he will get in. The two-point conversion is good. And we may be on our way to overtime. Everything was riding on that two-point conversion, and they got it. They got it. They now have the momentum. Time really dwindling in this game. Now their big deal is make sure to get a good kickoff and don't give up anything big on the defensive end. Nothing separating these two sides. 24 all our score as he sends this one away. It is fielded right at the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. They have a little bit of time here to get in the field goal range. Not much. A tie game. You don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. And we need overtime to decide this one after four quarters of play. We're all even. The extra session in a moment. This is the NFL on EA Sports. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. To 
Philadelphia's offense ready to give us another look. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. Overtime here out west, and you got a team from the eastern time zone. Maybe their body clock's a little thrown off, or is that overhyped? I don't think it's overhyped. And, and I think that for most teams, you're hoping that your mind overrules your body because your body's looking for slippers and, and, and bedtime clothes, right? They're looking for the pajamas. But in this case, you've got to stay with it mentally. And what a lot of teams do, they never change their watches. They always say on East Coast time and just go ahead that way to try and defeat any of the effects of moving to the West. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Hurts. Open right side complete to Rager. And take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 47. On first down, it's Sanders, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two, and that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight, now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. He'll look to throw. Flush to his right. They'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. Rager, he's got it. And he is going to have an Eagles first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, good start for him under center here in overtime. Now three of three. And this is where you have to know who you have playing quarterback. You've got a confident thrower right now, someone who's taking care of the ball, but not being timid as well and is moving the team downfield. That opens up your playbook and allows you to dial up some big shots if you want them. They'll run on first down. Sanders. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settling because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, breaking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. Yeah, like you alluded to, especially this part of the field. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. It's third and four. Big play here, trying to keep this opening drive of overtime alive. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. Letting one go deep for the end zone. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six.
The kick by Elliott is good. And that will break our tie and give them a three-point lead. They're able to put three on the board here in the opening drive of OT and now up to their defense to try and see if they can hold this one. I like how you framed it up because obviously this game is not over, right? They go down and kick a field goal, then we head to sudden death. But if the defense can hold, take the ball away, turn it over on downs, this game's over. So it's the 49ers who will get the football first with a chance to win it here in overtime. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. And the 49ers settling in for their next drive. The field goal would push it to sudden death. We just saw the field goal on the other end, but I don't think they are thinking field goal. At least not to start this drive, they're not thinking field goal. Not at all, because your point is well taken. Yeah, kick the field goal, you push it to sudden death, but you're also kicking off and giving the other team the ball with a chance to kick a field goal and beat you. Get the touchdown, finish the game off. That has to be the mindset. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. He's had some big runs in this game. Not there, though. But I don't think they're going to be deterred by that play right there. He's had some nice runs in the game. And how many times have we seen a good running back get stopped, yet turn it into something big on a later carry? I'd stay with him. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. What can Garoppolo do now with his drive? Pressure comes and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. Fletcher Cox breaking through to get him to the ground. It's a loss of seven. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback, third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. well that last sack, it puts Garoppolo and the 49ers in a tough spot. They face a third and long. Taking a shot for Samuel. And incomplete on the deep ball. Third down is a down. Both sides know they absolutely have to win. And the name of the game for the defense is pressure on the quarterback. But pressure on the quarterback with contact, that's how you end up winning it. A big call here in overtime. They're going for it on fourth down. They'll go for it. It's Garoppolo looking deep for Jennings. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Niners go for it, but it doesn't work out. And boy, possession here turns over with the football already being in the red zone. The Philadelphia's offense ready to go again. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it.